lecture we saw how the CPU's performance can be enhanced, okay? that is in terms of the miss penalty to reduce that, that is the point. And we also saw how the performance can be enhanced by having different types of cache organization and also we saw through examples that even the cache size affects that. Needless to add that uh, the sequence in which the addresses are generated that will have very much a say, but by and large you can say that the cache size as well as the cache organization these things uh, influence the cache performance and in turn affect or influence the CPU's performance. Okay? Fine. Now let us uh, go back and take a look at the page. page Essentially, page is a physical entity. Now, what, uh, like what we said about the cache size, let us also take a look at what will be the influence of page size on the performance. Okay. Now, page is a physical entity, and uh, based on which do we have to fix the size of the page? We know that <coughs> a page is swapped in or swapped out. And we also noted that a program is said to be thrashing, right? Thrashing. In case there is too much, too many page faults, and too often you have got to swap in and swap out the page, right? We made a note of that particular thing. Now, when will it happen? It will happen when the page size is small. When the page size is small, and especially if uh, the program is fairly big enough. Right? Then it will occupy more pages and um, you will, um, the pages will be swapped in and out too often. Now, whenever uh, a fault occurs, uh, we had seen both in the case of uh, uh, cache, that is in the case of cache miss, right? Um, at least the cache was faster, but in the case of uh, memory, when the page fault occurs, the penalty is very high because we are, we are talking in terms of some milliseconds, right? whereas in the other one at least it is a few microseconds or maybe even nanoseconds. So now, the page fault when it occurs and when does it occur when the page size is small and the whole program or uh, meaningful parts of the program cannot be held in a page. Okay? When the page size is small, then there is frequent page fault and we said this would lead to uh, programs which are said to be thrashing, okay? thrashing, this is the term we had used earlier. Okay. Now, if you want to avoid programs which are uh, thrashing, that is which cause uh, page fault frequently, then obviously page size you would like to make it large. Well, the small or large or uh, two fuzzy terms, okay, how small and how large, these are things which we have to decide. Now, what happens in the case of large page size? You can say as far as the page fault is concerned, that occurrence will come down, no doubt. So, there will be less overheads. We can say that when you have large page size, the overheads will be less, agreed. What, is, what are these overheads? The overheads associated with swapping in and swapping out the page, which really do not contribute to processing, correct? Fine. 
Now, whereas in the case of a small size page, the overheads will be increasing. But then is uh, having large page size a uh, solution? Now, let us just see. We do not know about the size of programs. Let us say you have a, a, a page of size, uh, let us say 16K, right? And if there are programs which are not more than say 2 to 6K, then what happens? Just to accommodate a 2 to 6K size programs, the whole page will have to be used. Now, why we talk about a whole page? Because that is one full unit which will be swapped in or out, right? So, if you take a look at the physical memory, you would uh, keep seeing that now this is the physical memory. I am not specifically marking the locations. You will keep saying, keep seeing, see large pages, okay? Let us say this is one particular page, right? This is one particular page. Only a small portion of it may really be occupied by the program. Now, having large page size will no doubt reduce overheads, but what happens is it also leads to underutilization of the memory space, right? So, this leads to underutilization of the memory space. Now, you can imagine that if instead of having a 16K page, if you had possibly say 4K page, fine, when a 2K program is loaded, only huh, 2K out of the 4K will be underutilized, uh, will not be utilized rather, right? Whereas here, 14K out of the 16K will not be utilized, right? So, underutilization of uh, memory space, which is really physical memory, right? That is the physical memory that uh, what we are talking about, right? Okay. Now, if you have small size page, it will lead to programs which are thrashing and more overheads. If you have large one, the overheads will be reduced, but the physical memory will not be efficiently utilized. So, we really have to compromise between these two. Now, why this particular thing is happening really? What did I say about page? Page is essentially a physical entity, right? Page is essentially a physical entity and what else do we know about page? We also know that a page is of fixed size. In fact, that is in fact causing the problem. The page is fixed size right? And there is a need that you have to swap in and swap out always one page. There is no question of saying, okay, I will fill in only half of this page and so on and so forth, okay? We do not have the mechanism for that. So, page being fixed size, we are talking about this underutilization of physical memory. So, what will happen is, you will be having many pages and you will uh, be having uh, unutilized space. So, you are not really making use of the necessary, I mean uh, making full use of the available resource. Okay? So, what is the alternate uh, or what is the solution for this problem? Now, how shall we go about? Yes, the way, best thing is always to see what is about uh, whatever we said about the page, we said it is physical entity. So, alternately instead of some physical entity, why not go for a yeah, logical entity and take a look at it? So, that is a that may provide a solution, right? So, we said page is a fixed size and again essentially it is a physical entity. Now, go think of whether there is any logical entity, right? It is a logical entity given a program. A user's program. What are the logical things which we can think about? We can always think about the program part of it or the code part of a program. 
which essentially contains the code uh, which is called program. Then the data part of it, okay. Then some space that may be needed for temporary storage, which is the stack, wherein you always stack the information that you or the data that you need and remove from that stack that is essentially a temporary storage space, which is always needed, right. So, a code, a data, a stack or uh, these are from the program point of view. From the data structure point of view, for instance, the, uh, we are talking about logical things, right. That is, we can say some portion of the memory is the code portion and some portion of the memory is the data portion and some portion of the memory is used for stack. Okay? So, that is a logical entity. We are not talking anything about a fixed thing like we are not talking about physical memory at all in this particular case. Okay, some portion of memory, you know, whether it is in the memory or whether it is in the disk space, whatever it is. Okay, so, this is logical. That is certainly the logical characteristics of the code part of the program will be different from those of the data. Similarly, about stack space, okay, the way they are used, they are all different. Okay, now, this is from the program point of view. Now, in addition from the data structuring point of view, you can talk about say arrays of data, right, which uh, the data which is uh, put in some array form or maybe in tabular form or tables of data or suppose we talk about data structured in tree form, fine. Now, each one of these as you can see is a logical entity, right. Now, why not have the, why not divide the ad total address space? When we say total address space, what is it we have in mind? We have the disk space because that is always the one which is, uh, which the user will talk about. He will not really bother about what is physically existing, okay, because that is essentially the computer system architecture, uh, that person's concern. So, we can talk about these things as logical entities and uh, we can say that the code is in this portion of the memory, the data is in this portion of the memory and so on and so forth. In other words, what we are talking about here is some logical entity called segments. Okay. These are called the segments of the program. <coughs> now, you can see the code segment will be different from the data segment in their characteristics, in their individual characteristics. This has nothing to do with the physical part. Okay. So, but only thing, one thing here is we do not know about the size of this. It will vary from program to program. Whereas, we can say very clearly a page we know is physically existing and hence we talk about the size which is fixed and these things would vary, the segment size will keep varying and in fact, in that lies the solution also. That is, we are going away from the fixed size page to a variable size segment or segments, fine. Now, you can see that Ah, what will be the, uh, talking about the variable size, uh, we will come back to the variability. What about the size? What will be for instance, the minimum size of a segment? We said variable, okay. there must be some minimum and some maximum. Maximum we know, <laughs> okay. that is the real maximum will be the virtual address space, because that is the limit of the CPU's addressability. The user cannot have anything more. But then you talk about dividing them, but then when you divide them, we just do not know. We will come to that. What is? But certainly there is a minimum size on we can talk about. What will be the minimum size of the segment? Obviously, that will be decided by the page size. Because ultimately, 
the logical things that we have here will have to be physically stored in the memory so that the CPU may access. Okay. So, there is no point in talking about a segment okay, which is less in size than the page. So, we can certainly talk about the minimum size of segment of segment is the nothing but the page size. Okay, that is fine. Because page is the one thing that is we are calling it a block, right? Page is a block that is being swapped in and out. Okay, so that is the minimum size. Meaning, in case the data, let us say data segment, in case the data segment does not need one whole page, but still it has got to be within that, we cannot uh, afford, because that is the one which will be swapped in or out and it will be meaningful to look at that thing as one segment, one thing, okay, fine. That is then well, what happens when you mix up, what will happen is suppose in the same uh, page you have both data and code, then the characteristics of this will vary. So, there will be problem about dealing with them at the logic level. Okay? Now, that is right. Now, what about the variability? There must be some criterion based on which we make something variable. Is it, not? it must be useful to that. Good. Um, <coughs> now, let us see. <coughs> like pages are swapped in and out segments also will be swapped in and out. In fact, we always talk about something like an incoming segment and an outgoing segment. Similarly, we can we could have talked about an incoming page and an outgoing page. What is that? That is something a page which has been swapped in that will be your incoming page. A page that is outgoing would be the swapped out page, right. Similarly, in the case of segment also. Now, remember all these things all from the point of uh, view of increasing the CPU's utilization, fine. So, the user, uh, the user will of course, feel very comfortable talking about the logical aspects of it, but certainly not the physical thing. Okay. So, a segment that is incoming will consist of many pages, minimum will be one page size, one page, okay? minimum will be one page. So, the, uh, for a segment to be brought in and then segment to be taken out, because ultimately though we may talk about a logical thing, it will have to exist physically in the memory, is it not? Finally, we have got to look at that. So, there must be some mechanism for handling this also. right? like we are talking about uh, uh, page fault, segment fault will arise when a particular segment is not available, a segment fault will come. Okay, so, mechanism for handling these things. Now, certainly these things are overheads, let us remember, okay. mechanism for handling must be there. Okay. Uh, let us also remember that these contribute to the overheads and so this will have to be kept to as uh, low as possible. Okay. Uh, so, the variability of uh, the size of the segment uh, will go by the logical part of it. Okay. It all depends on the application. There are uh, situations when you may have very few data and more processing, in which case the code size will be much bigger than the data size. And there are applications the other way. That is, the program is small, okay, there is not much pro processing to be done, but then the data it will have to handle will be huge. And uh, in uh, running a specific program, 
we come across the stack space because essentially it is for uh, storing the temporary variables. Okay, it's a temporary storage space. So in some cases, as and when the data keeps coming, you may continuously processing. But in some other cases, you may have to stack and keep it for future use. So depending on the applications, these sizes will vary. But given a specific application, we know what will be the size of the core, what will be the size of the data or what will be the size of the stack, at least by and large we would know. So that is why we say the criterion for fixing the variability will be based on the, the logical aspect of it, that is a logical entity. So certainly this is different from the physical entity because the page is in physically in a memory, whereas these things, these segments, they will be logical uh, segments in the virtual address space. So we talk about segments in virtual address space and pages in the physical address space, but ultimately for CPU to proceed, the segments will have to be brought in. When the segments are brought in to the physical memory, they will be brought in chunks of pages. Okay, and the minimum size will be one page size. Okay, good. Now, when a segment is not available and it or parts of a segment, you see, a segment can consist of many pages. It is not necessary that all the pages of a segment will be available. There is no need, right? In the case of a very huge uh, a program, very huge, I mean, a program which is uh, huge in size. Suddenly, the 10,000th instruction can wait, right? The first five, uh, let us say, 1,000 uh, instructions may will be taken to start with. The 10,000 instruction is going to come much later. So you can see that even though we may talk about a code segment of a very large uh, program, you will see a part of this code segment only need be loaded, and they will be in pages, okay? So the you will have to keep swapping in and swapping out the pages depending on the need. In fact, uh, uh, these pages, we were talking about the page uh, fault occurring and so on, right? Similarly, a segment fault occurs, the same thing, uh, situation is not different. We talk about an incoming page and an outgoing page, I said. Why should uh, a page go out? because we have a page which is no more in use and we need to bring in a page which is needed. Okay? Now that particular thing may be, uh, there is a term for it also, let us note it, that is on demand a page is brought in, right? So this thing is called uh, generally a demand paging, okay, there is a term for it, that is on demand a page is brought in. Okay? So it is called a demand paging. Demand paging essentially means whenever there is a need, a page is brought in. Okay? That is what it is. Similarly here too. Okay? Whenever a segment, in other words, part of a segment, okay, need not necessarily the whole segment, part of segment is needed, it will be brought in or taken out. So like in the case of page replacement, case of segment also we talk about segment, a segment which is no more in needed okay, is going to be thrown out. So there must be an algorithm by which we replace a segment. So like in the case of page, a segment also we talk about a segment replacement algorithm based on what criteria or consideration we bring in a new page and uh, replace, uh, that is place a new page in place of an old page, okay, which can be swapped out. Okay. Uh, same thing, what is it? Whatever we saw in the case of page, same thing holds good here. Remember what we are talking about in the case of page? We are talking about an LRU algorithm and a FIFO algorithm. Right? That is first in, first out algorithm and the least recently used algorithm. That is a page that is least recently used, it will be swapped out. As per the other algorithm, FIFO algorithm, 
the first page that was brought in will be swapped out, will be removed and that will be replaced by a new page. Similarly, here we have based on the similar consideration, just the terminologies are different. For instance, um, you talk about a best fit algorithm and uh, other thing is called a first fit algorithm. Okay? First fit algorithm and best fit algorithm. Now, what is that essentially? Now, we are talking about a segment, right? a segment which will have to be brought into the memory. Uh, we have to take a look into the memory arrangement. Okay. Finally, into the memory, the segments will have to be brought. Uh, so, let us just assume that uh, uh, there are many pages. Okay. Uh, <coughs> uh, to start with, memory will be empty. There is no problem. Okay. And into any portion of the memory, you can load any segment anywhere that you want. Right. And after some time, when programs are running, we have got to take a look at that situation. Okay. So, possibly there was a segment earlier, okay, an old segment which was uh, say spanning a few pages, right. And then uh, let us say I am not bothered what exactly that segment is, okay, some segment that was there. And let us say that was spanning some four pages and that needs to be replaced by an incoming segment. Now, the new incoming segment is only three pages, let us say. So, what will happen? So, it will happen that the new incoming pages occupies only three-fourths of the old space. Right? That means, in between we have got, right? that means earlier, okay, this is another segment that is being used, okay, they are not fixed size. Okay. So, let us say earlier, say this portion as well as this portion was in use, this, this for say segment 1 and this is for segment 2. Okay. And segment 1 has been swapped out, a new segment let us say segment 3 has been brought in and now the segment 3 is less in size okay and so what happens is an empty space i mean unutilized space is created okay such things are called holes meaning portions of memory space which are not utilized fine now like this you can see that after program execution there'll be holes in different places, right? Understandable. So now let us say these are the things that have been used. Now I said just like a segment, no? What will be the segment size generally? It will be ah, so multiples of pages. Minimum is one, right? Minimum is one. So it will be multiple of pages. That is why I said earlier four pages were used and subsequent incoming segment needed only three pages. So, you essentially this is one page and that page is fixed size. Okay? We have not changed our definition. We continue only segment is variable size. Now, you can see here that you have got different segments. Now, this is another segment and now this is another segment, okay? whatever be. Now, let us say, yeah, why do not we call this segment 4, segment 5. Segment 1 has been, whatever be it, has been swapped out. Now, suppose there is a need for bringing a new segment, call it segment, uh, okay, oh, oh, let us continue. Uh, suppose this 5, suppose a new segment, segment 6 is to be brought in. Okay. Uh, let us say we have one page hole here, 
another uh, hole of two pages size, another hole of three pages size. Okay, these are all holes, right? Now suppose segment six comes, and I will just assume that it is uh, two page size. Okay, that's an incoming segment. So it's incoming. It's a new segment. Okay. Now we have some space. That is, we have we have holes that they can be filled. Now the as per the first okay best fit algorithm, let us say first one we'll take that best fit algorithm. An incoming page, uh, sorry, an incoming segment is of two page size. So it will look at the first hole. It cannot be filled in. Okay. That is, it's better always to have the segment continuously, right? So then it cannot fill in. So it will to take a look at the second one. Yeah, now this is good. Two pages will go in. Now it so happens. Okay, we'll see that. Um, all right. So it will go into this. That is two page fits in into two page. Now suppose. Um, let us have uh, this particular thing say as three page and suppose this is four page hole. Okay? Now only we can see the difference between the algorithm, otherwise with the previous example I took you would not be able to, best fit is also first fit. Now a two page one, now this two page one can go either into this or into this. Okay? Uh, again, I think I am running into a problem. <laughs> now it looks at this. No, it cannot be uh, <coughs> filled in here. So then, uh, the next hole can be filled in, and that is, of course, the best fit in the sense it will leave only a hole of one page size. Okay, and also that happens to be the first fit. Unfortunately, I have created a situation where I am not, I will just change the size of the segment. So, then only I can work it out differently. Yes, suppose I have this as four page and this as three page, right. Now, here is the segment. Ah, right. <coughs> Now you can see, as per best fit algorithm, this two page segment cannot go in. Okay. Two page can go into four page, it can also go into three page. As per best fit algorithm, the two page segment will be brought into this and not into this, mainly because the best fit means as far as possible. Of course, if there were a uh, hole with two page, that is the best of course, but between these two, the better of the two, okay, best is better of the two or more, whatever it is. So, as per best fit algorithm, this incoming segment will be go into this, as per first fit algorithm, it will go into this, because whatever hole that is seen first will be filled in. Okay? So, these are uh, uh, two methods by which it can be. Uh, the holes may be filled in. Now, just take a look at it. Uh, is best fit always the best arrangement? What happens in the case of best fit? It is not always the best. As far as fitting in is concerned, it is the best. But you can see that if the incoming segment comes here, no? that is as per the best fit algorithm. The best fit algorithm is going to create holes which are small in size, right. Now, it so happened in this particular example, one page is the minimum thing, but then suppose this were six pages and this were four pages, then you would see that best fit algorithm will lead to creation of holes of smaller size. 
and these holes may be distributed in the entire physical memory space. So, what may happen is you will be having one page here a hole a four page hole here you may be having another one page hole here. Now, suppose okay, now this will be one page as per this. Suppose I have a five page segment which must be brought in. Now, there is a hole of one page, there is a hole of four page as it is physically five pages of memory is available, but the segment cannot be brought in mainly because I do not have contiguous memory location. In other words, what happens is the physical memory, uh, no by filling in the physical memory okay, as per whatever be the algorithm that you may be following, you are creating, you are actually fragmenting the memory and so yeah, right. Even though the memory space is available, the, the memory space is available in fragments in different places. Okay. So, fragmentation is one problem, fine. Now, you can see that best fit algorithm will create more and more smaller number of holes and it will lead to more fragmentation problem actually. Okay. Because first fit algorithm does not really bother, whichever holes for is available it will fill in and we do not know what is the remaining portion of it. Okay. So, the fragmentation how is that uh, that uh, fragmentation problem how is that to be solved? One way is of course, through overheads what is it? Whenever a hole is created right for instance a hole was created here no, earlier the whole thing was used and subsequently a new incoming segment created this hole right. So, what, uh, what can be done is whenever a hole is created immediately the adjacent segments can be moved up by this there is a whole thing the whole segment will be moved up and you can create the whole thing is moved up okay and you create a hole with the adjacent hole and thereby you combine smaller holes into bigger hole right it's an overhead problem so that is uh, that particular thing is called compaction that is you compact the holes thereby <coughs> all the smaller holes will be brought together and then you create bigger hole right. A bigger hole is always better to have so that anything for instance if this particular thing were done earlier then one page and four page hole would have been together a five page hole would have been available and a new coming segment could have been easily accommodated. But then the seg every time whenever a segment fault arises fine this uh, compaction must be done so as to avoid the fragmentation. But then as we said that this in fact is a clear increase in the overheads right. Fine. <coughs> now, uh, so always what happens is you try to solve a problem. What is it we are trying to solve here? We are trying to solve the problem associated with underutilization of physical memory. And so, from page which is essentially a physical entity, we moved on to a logical entity and created the segments right and then once you know that segments are there very much like in the case of page we also need mechanism for handling the segment and because we talk about incoming and outgoing segment very much like incoming and outgoing pages and the mechanism for handling the segments will automatically must be based on some replacement algorithm and now we are finding that the physical memory can be fragmented filled with holes and there may be a problem when holes are distributed all over the place 
and we will have enough physical resource, physically memory available, but not in contiguous form, so that an incoming segment cannot be accommodated. Now, that would mean compacting them and making smaller holes into bigger ones, right? Thereby, we can accommodate an incoming segment, which again leads to overheads. So, now what happens? With segmentation and paging, right? From segmentation, we have come to that is first address will include a segment address. From that, we have got to look into how many pages okay, are there and where they can be loaded. And after you know, after you load the specific page, then you proceed with rest of it, whatever you had seen earlier. Okay. This address, that is the address translation starts with first resolving the segment and then the paging and then the rest of whatever we know, that is going to the cache and so on and so forth. So, let us take a look at the, the address translation involved in the whole process, because now we have introduced segmentation. Now, we have got to take a look at paging and segmentation, right? So, which is what we will do, maybe with a specific example. In the case of paging, we saw how to translate from virtual address to physical address. So, virtual address is also called a logical address. Now, we have introduced segmentation in addition to paging. So, there is one other level of translation. Okay. So, how you start from a logical address and go to translate ultimately the physical address. This we will take a look at. The uh, mechanism is similar to what we have seen earlier. It is nothing uh, much new. Now, given a virtual address, that is the CPU produces this logical address or the virtual address, because this is the uh, disk address, this is what is there in the disk address space. Okay, There is a total address space which CPU uh, can generate. Now, that will consist of essentially something which points to a segment, because now segment uh, has been included. And then uh, a specific location within the segment, which is the offset. Okay. Then, now, like we had page table, now here also we need a table and especially we need with lot more features mainly because the page was fixed size, but now segment is a variable size. Okay. In addition to other things, the segment size also must be indicated, is it not? So, there will be a table, generally this table is called a segment descriptor table. Of course, different people may call it differently or just a ta segment table or something a segment descriptor table. Okay. Uh, so, this table essentially will have information about all the segments and so, the portion of the logical address which generally is called a segment uh, selector okay, and then offset, selector and offset these are two things. So, the segment selector will indicate within the table where exactly information about this particular segment is. And the segment descriptor table itself like page table will be in the memory. And so, there will be another register which points to the origin of the table like we had earlier in the case of page uh, descriptor table we had, no? page table or page descriptor table we had. Similarly, something which points to the origin. Okay. Now, in that particular table, there will be a specific entry that is pointed to by one portion of the CPU generated address. So, that will tell where exactly the segment starts, okay. a, po a part of that information in the table entry will give information on where exactly that particular, particular segment starts in the memory. So, with reference to that and the offset coming from here, right? there may be a need to generate an address called a linear address. We will see what exactly the linear address is. Then after you get the linear address, depending on whether paging has been enabled or not, that is you may or may not have paging, that possibility is there. right? You may or may not have segmentation, you may or may not have paging, so all this possibility. In case paging is enabled, then take this 
address and then do the translation which the details of which we have seen earlier right and then arrive at the physical address otherwise if suppose there is no paging at all directly this itself is the physical address this is what it is so with the result what we have here is we have to consider different memory models some in which segmentation will be enabled segmentation will be there and paging will be enabled or not so let us see the different models for instance suppose there is no segmentation and there is no paging also straightforward absolutely no problem so as you can see that this is called a flat model in which case the logical address that is generated okay that itself is the physical address is the same as physical address okay is there is no translation nothing need be done on the other hand suppose you have only paging you have no segmentation right now this one will be called a linear address okay now this is what we had seen earlier there was only paging translation there was no segment which we had considered earlier where we said from the logical address it is translated to physical address okay so from logical address a translation was done okay making use of entries in the page table right a translation is done to physical address in fact okay we will talk about this we have seen earlier uh, then suppose there is segmentation as well as paging okay this in fact is the model in which segmentation is there with paging that is the model that is given. Now here you have this is uh, precisely what we have indicated that is from the logical address you have to get to linear get the linear address right making use of segment descriptor table and then from the linear address you have to get the physical address making use of the page translation mechanism it is very much like oh, that is with reference to page table and so on so forth right so here from logical to linear address there will be a translation you make use of the table as indicated from which you get the physical address okay now the last that is you have segmentation but without paging there is no paging involved okay that is what we have is we have segmentation but no paging but this is a somewhat a queer situation right paging is more meaningful than segmentation but suppose you have then what happens is the logical uh, the logical address is translated as before to linear address okay linear address which itself is used as the physical address okay so you can just see how the overheads have been increasing that is in the address translation right so we started with this earlier that if we set paging in case there is paging from logical address there is a virtual address right from the virtual address we are getting the physical address now you see with both from virtual address you have got to get at some address which again must be translated into physical address but the mechanisms are similar right there is no difference so if you have page there must be a page table which gives information about the page and if you have segment there must be a table which gives information about the segment now recall that while talking about the page table and the entries in that we are talking about lot of bits you know like protection bits right and then uh, access rate bits okay there are many things we are talking about that is and then uh, yeah 
protection from between system and user segment, right? Uh, then access rights read or write or read and write or write, write read only, etc. Now, all this we are talking about in case of page. Whenever you have segmentation, it is meaningful to have all this information in the segment, is it not? Because segment is a logical entity. Now, once you define say data segment, you say this data is read only, you do not bother anymore about the page. So, whatever we have been talking about earlier in case of page, in case there is segmentation, it that all those information will be included in the page descriptor table. And so, you can see that an entry in the page descript, uh, segment descriptor table will not only give the segment starting address, it shows where exactly the segment starts, but also it will include all this information and lot more too, right. So, these tables are essentially useful for having this extra information. And then for instance, there may be one bit in this which says, this segment is for system, this segment is for user, okay. So, like that you can specify uh, what you call as the privilege levels, okay. So, that the system is always at a higher privilege level than the user and so on and so forth. 